So you go to a bar with a buddy, you drink too much Guinness, and a couple of things could happen. A, you just stumble home and spend the rest of the night searching for your live pterodactyls on eBay. Or B, you come up with an idea for a smart, funny, brave, satirical news show. And here's the kicker that pokes fun at the absurdities of life in Iran. And that's just what these two did. Salman Arbabi and Kambiz Hosseini both grew up in Iran, immigrated to the U.S. in search of the freedom and opportunity that they didn't really get to know at home. Salman actually left when he was 12. His folks were worried that he was going to be drafted into the Iran-Iraq war at the age of 13. So the show those guys created was called Parasit. It's a weekly Farsi language TV show operating out of Washington. And the show parodies Iranian politics and culture and asks tough questions, ones about the existence of gays in Iran. Of course, as you know, Ahmadinejad says there are none, which is gold for their program. What is it to you? As soon as this guy opens his mouth, we have a material. It talks about internet censorship, political repression, and the straw has really struck a chord in Iran. It's downloaded, seen on illegal satellite, bootlegged on DVDs, passed around. Now, Parzi, while becoming a cultural force there, has also faced criticism because it does slam the Iranian government, but not the U.S. government, which funds the show. We'll ask Salman about that and about the role that Parzi could play in the continuing Arab awakening. Who, 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 Parazit? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What's happening? Oh man, I'm all good. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, sir. No. This thank is you. cool. I mean, I, um, I'm really excited. I, uh, thank you for all coming. Uh, yeah. and, and to feel like my ass is actually sitting on the same chair as like Jodie Foster yeah, yeah, yeah. and yeah, yeah. Clint Eastwood. This yeah. is great. So thank you very no, much for having me. Honored to have you, my thank friend. Thank you, sir. The uh, so the show you do is amazing and uh, and and. Brave, and you've heard all this stuff before, but before people get into it, I'll that, go ahead. It's okay. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's okay. Strong, honored. Uh, your story. I mean, because it, it, you're not, I mean, you're a kid, uh, uh, you know, who is now in the United States and you live in the United States as a man, but you grew up in Iran. Right. And, and so most people don't really understand what's going on in Iran. You lived it. I mean, tell me what your experience is. I don't even know what the hell is going on in Iran. Yeah. Well, yeah, you know, I, um, I, I'm 38 years old, so um, I was six when we had the revolution. I, um, I remember everything. It was pretty horrible. It was more like a little civil war thing going on. And then immediately after the Shah left, uh, we had all this turmoil, you know, all these uh, internal... And opposition parties were killing Yeah, all yeah. Opposition, opposition parties killing each other. And then very quickly, right after that, you, we had the Iran-Iraq war. Uh, eight years of just madness. It was like two drunk people in the bar just beating the crap out of each other. And uh, unfortunately, it was, it was a war that was sponsored by a lot of countries outside of Iran. So it was really hard on people. And then um, 85, uh, I was 12 years old. Uh, my mom's like, we got to get the hell out of here. And, and, and uh, we talked about this. This was when around the same time where people started seeing Ayatollah Khomeini in the moon. Yeah. So my mom's like, dude, we got to get out of here. It's, like it's insane. Big, it's a big <laughs> night, right? Like everybody said one night. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. It was crazy. I remember like I was doing my homework late as usual. It was like 9 or 8 or 9 p.m. And uh, people are like, hello, Akbar, hello, Akbar. I'm like, what the F is going on? You know, open up the window, look outside. There's nothing going on. And then my mom and my dad, everyone was like, what the hell? What, what's going on? And then uh, next day in the media, they're like, we saw the Ayatollah. The Imam was in the moon. And I'm, my mom's like, all right, get the bags. <laughs> get, 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 get the hell out of here. You know, people are tripping without any acid. So, so that's, that was it. And, and, and you know, at 13, um, that was the cutoff age for, for guys to leave the country because they wanted to keep all the guys to die in a war. Mm -hmm. That was totally stupid. So um, we got out. I was very lucky and, you know, privileged because uh, I lived in France for a little while and uh, I moved to the United States with a green card in my hand. Right. But the rest of the people behind uh, had it even harder. Well, you and your, and your partner could come up with this show. It really did come out of just having a drunk conversation at a bar one night? Yes. That's why we should have alcohol in Iran. You know how many amazing ideas would come out? I don't understand what the problem is. <laughs> well, that's the whole point. <laughs> Well, I mean, the Iranian government doesn't want a show like yours around. Well, they definitely don't. I mean, they, uh, they have no sense of humor. Uh, they're just these really angry, bearded, kind of just... I don't know why they're pissed off, to be honest with you. They have, they, they have everything. They have the money. They have the, you know, the, the systems controlled yeah. by them. They have the military. For some reason, they're pissed off. And when we have a show like this, they get even more pissed off. Well, you guys go out there and, I mean, you do tell jokes, but you do really point out what's happening there, and that causes some, some grief for them. 
Did you know that when you set out to do this, that this was gonna be a big show that really- Oh broke? yeah, this was the easiest show ever. I can't believe no one else came up with this because we don't tell the jokes, they tell the jokes. <laughs> like enough <laughs> stupid stuff comes out of their mouths, like you're like, wow, this is great. Like a lot of times my, my, co my coworker, uh, Kambiz, he, he, doesn't, he doesn't even have to react to anything or say anything. We just play a little sound bite and then you go right to him and he's like. <laughs> we have and a, that's it. We have a clip from the show. Let's see a clip from the show here. همه همکاری ها با موزه لوور پاریس منحل شد می سازمان میرات فرهنگی هیچ گونه همکاری با موزه لوور فرانسه نخواهد داشت تحت هیچ عنوان تحت این شکل موزه است فرهنگ توشه فلان با اونم شما مشکل داری با موزه لوور پاریس چه مشکلی داری من نمیدونم ها مونالیزه حجاب نداره <تصفيق> Like, so what hard. other reason would it, like, it's, it's Mona Lisa for God's sake, you yeah. know, what the hell is wrong with that, you know? It's a little painting and it's like priceless. So here's the thing, you guys can do those jokes because you're Iranian, right? And you understand the culture from the inside. From the outside, we don't really, a lot of people don't know what's happening in Iran. They, they right. see Ahmadinejad, they hear about the Supreme Leader, which in and of itself is an uncomfortable title for anybody. Absolutely. And we... The and, Supreme Leader. Yeah, it's, you know... <laughs> does, he have, like, does he have like a business card? <laughs> he pulls out his like... <laughs> I just assume he figures you know it. <laughs> he just goes like this. Okay, no, no Chirons, no Lord no, Thurs. Nothing comes after The him. Supreme Leader. But we don't know what's going on, but what we do hear now is we hear about, you know, like kind of the, the drums of war beating. Right. You hear drones, you hear this from right. the outside too. What, what is going on in Iran that we don't know about? In Iran, yeah. I have no idea what the hell is going on. But you know, you have you have. There's a lot of stuff going on. You know, the sanctions are clearly working, uh, and now they're threatening to, you know, close the uh, Strait of Hormuz, which is like, a, like I think 20%, if I'm not mistaken, of uh, world's oil comes out of there. Uh, you have the Israelis doing some stuff that you know they make no comment about. Yeah, uh, you have the Americans like losing drones, and and then so there's a lot of. Uh, uh, intelligence or, or whatever, like, there's a war going on. It's a war that's clear. You, you're seeing, like, scientists getting capped left and right. Uh, and there's a lot of pressure being put on Iran. I just hope it doesn't go as far as, like, a real, real war. Right. And this is just my own personal experience because war, wars usually suck. There's no glory in, in war. And uh, at the end of the day, it's, it's, it's at the expense of poor people inside Iran who are just trying to make a living and continue with their ordinary days. The, um, the fact that it's a Voice of America show, so you're getting money from the Americans. Right. Uh, which is something you're facing criticism Yeah, for. I work for CIA. You work for CIA. Yes, sir. <laughs> Dude, but, that, but that's what The I'm... Iranians are so going to use that. <laughs> <laughs> Just that clip. Oh, yeah. Just that clip. Boom. I work for CIA. Nice. I should have looked at the camera. <laughs> I work for the CIA. Well, at least you didn't say you work for Mossad. That would be different, right? Right, right. That would have been, woo. But no, the idea that, I mean, it's Voice of America show. So I, mean, I know that inside Iran, when there's criticism from the government about your show, sure. they'll say you get American money. Yeah, yeah. No, it makes sense. Uh, when, when, when I got called in uh, 2003 to work at Voice of America, I was like, this was during the Bush administration. There was a lot of stuff going on. You know, the Americans weren't looking really good. Uh, I'm like, you know, I have a problem working for VOA because uh, people have a tendency to, like, point out the fact that, you know, it, this is a government propaganda machine and that's, that kind of stuff. But we have a charter, and the charter is actually pretty, pretty uh, clear. I haven't memorized it. I should have probably done that. I would have looked good for VOA. But uh, it's, it's your standard journalistic uh, rules. Good policy, yeah. Exactly. And, and, you know, U.S. has a lot of problems. We have a lot of problems in the United States. But my beef is in the United States. It's, it's still a democratic system. We have shows like, much like yours. We have, like, The Daily Show. We have other shows that criticizes the U.S. government. Uh, my, my problem is I, need, I, I feel like I need to do something for my people inside Iran mm -hmm. under an oppressive, horrible dictatorship. And if, if, if I take the government's money to do a show that we created, just the two of us, it wasn't produced by anyone else outside, we launched it from inside VOA, to fight uh, the oppress oppression inside Iran and talk about human rights and freedom of uh, speech and expression, then, hey, man, people can criticize me all they want. I feel like... Uh, we, there's a problem and we need to pick on that. And you're doing your part. I, I hope so. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm doing it because it's therapy for me. <laughs> you know, it's not, I don't feel like, oh, man, let's go save Iran. That's not my job. Uh, it's just, you know, you have all this stuff built up inside you that you, that's my way of expressing it. Any family repercussions for family back home? Yes, we get death threats all the time. It's pretty cool. Yeah. No, but I'm sure you do, right? Yeah, we do. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, how do, how do you... But, you know, I, I, 
I didn't really take it serious, to be honest with you, till the Saudi thing happened. And that was in DC. Yeah. I'm like, wow, these guys got some balls. They're gonna kill some Saudi diplomat in Washington. Yeah. Then I'm like, shit. You know, every time I, 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 I'm not kidding you, I look under my car once in a while, I'm like, is that, a, is that, what kind of wire is that thing? Is it, you know, so, but that's yeah. Quite a, that's a quite a place to have to go it in is. your mind though, right? It, it is, I, I just, I, I hope it doesn't ever happen, and if it does, just make it quick, please. Just, you, know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, nothing horrible, just, you know. Well, if you speak Farsi, you probably already know the show, uh, but hopefully uh, you'll, we'll have more access to it. Are you gonna do some stuff in English? Oh, cool stuff, right, thank you, sir. Uh, I didn't know this, but carry no, on. I, I, I know, this was not scripted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're gonna, we're gonna come back, uh, some really cool stuff, some cool announcements about the show. Uh, uh, I'm not gonna give you the whole, you know, scoop, but uh, one of the best things I can tell you right now uh, is we're gonna come out in English too, like subtitles and stuff. Yeah. So. The show's called Parasite, which is static. Right? Static. Static, because you find them on static. You find them on Facebook. There are links to videos from Parasite as well. Uh, Salman, it's so great to see you, man. Thank you, brother. You're the man. Salman, I'm on here, everybody. We'll be right back.